What's shaking my friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Shay and today we are going to talk about what I read in the month of July. Looking back on July, I feel like my reading was kind of a very mixed bag. I did have some five stars, but I, when I think about it, I feel like I didn't read that much. But when I look at my statistics, I actually really read a ton. So in the month of July, just real quick, I read 16 books for a total of 7,099 pages. I had seven three-star reads, seven four-star reads, and two five-star reads this month, which is not bad. So normally when I don't have a challenge going for my book club where I'm just like uh, scrambling to read things, my average page count is five to 5,500 pages. I did not have anything going on with my book club. I just was really like kind of trying to read things this month and I'm very happy with my reading. I did have COVID uh, the first week of July, which kind of let me read a little bit more and then uh, it kind of went to crap because we then adopted a dog that has some behavioral issues and we have been very busy trying to deal with her. And so that's kind of where I've been. So while I do feel like I've been busy doing other things, it appears that I have actually read a pretty good amount of pages this month. So let's get into it. I will start with um, the lowest rated book of the month to the highest rated book of the month. So if you saw my August TBR, uh, you heard the rant in there that, you know, I'm really going to start chopping down my series. Look for a series um, check-in uh, later this month, probably. Uh, I'll be filming that. But for now, let's talk about the series. So coming in at the lowest rated book of the month is going to be Soul Smith by Will White. Listen here. This is the second book in the Cradle series, and this basically follows our um, main character, Lyndon, who is from a society where you have magic users and you have non-magic users and non-magic users if you don't have an affinity for magic you are really looked down upon so Lyndon does not have an affinity for magic and basically some things occur and he is bound and determined to level his own self up and level his own magic up despite the fact that he has been told he has zero magic so it sounds like a really cool premise um, but these first two novels have been a very very slow, not very great start for me. I liked the first 50% of book one was a five star read and then it took a turn and it kind of was has been three stars since then. I can understand how it may change going into book three because there were some uh, reveals that happened at the end of book two that may uh, kind of make the book three more enticing to me. I'm not sure. I know a lot of people say, keep going, keep going. It gets great. It gets great. But really, honestly, how many books do I have to read in a series before I start enjoying it? And do I really want to push through a series that I am not enjoying? So this is book three of Cradle series, and this will probably be my last book in Cradle if I do not like this book. Coming in at number 15 is another letdown disappointment, and that's going to be Charmcaster by Sebastian de Castell. So I loved Spellslinger. I gave it five stars. That's the first book in this series. It follows our main character, Kellen, who also we're in a world where there are magic users, and some have more magic than others. And Kellen, unfortunately, basically at the beginning of the story, he doesn't have as much magic as anybody else. And he is in danger of becoming a slave because that's what non-magic users are. And then he finds out something about himself and he has to go on a quest. And I think that the problem with this series is I love Spellsinger. I love the world setup. However, this is kind of a quest story and I'm not that big on like journeying stories. And this is kind of like a different mystery villain of the week kind of which which works in some instances but I really don't like it in here there is an overarching plot but it's like a different um, mystery kind of thing every single book and it just doesn't work for me in this series and unfortunately I believe that I will be DNFing this series next up is going to be a symphony of stars by Barbara Kloss. So this series is a self-pub series that starts out with Gods of Monsters and it follows our main character. Um, and she has basically found out that she has some kind of magic when she plays her flute in a government dinner and ends up accidentally killing her sister. And then she gets whisked away to what they call the wilds. And here comes my, 
here comes my dog that I just adopted and if I could get her on camera there she is and um so basically she has to whisk away to a land and kind of hide because her magic is forbidden and then people come after her and then it's a whole whole story and this was the third and final book and I had some issues if you heard my rant I just could not remember what happened in the other two books to really fully immerse myself and enjoy this book. However, I do believe that this book probably could have been cut down by 200 pages. I mean, we're talking about a very, very, uh, it was almost 600 pages, I want to say, and it just could have been cut down. I mean, a lot of it was just not, you didn't have to have it in the book. It wouldn't have changed nothing, and it, it just, it just was a lot of filler. And, that is not really my favorite kind of thing in a book. So overall, this, the series was three stars for me. Despite book one, um, I think it came as a finalist in SBFBO at some point in time, but it just wound up not being a series for me. But also, please start putting recaps in your books, people. <laughs> The next one was a new series start for me, and that is going to be Last, The Last Smile in Sunder City, which is by Luke Arnold, who is the actor I think he played in Black Sails. And um, this follows our main character who is human, and basically there's this human city that's kind of walled off from these magical beings, and he goes into the land of magical beings, and something the humans have done has basically taken away... The magic from the magical beings. So basically they're in this city of magic where there's vampires, werewolves, all this stuff, and they actually don't really exist anymore because there is no magic. So it is a kind of mystery thing. He is hired to figure out what happened to a teacher that happens to be a vampire, and it goes from there. It was fine. There was nothing wrong with it. It just didn't really, I, none of the characters really grabbed me, essentially, but I am going to continue on, see what book two has to offer, and again, uh, my take on series is if book two does not have anything to offer me, I will just go ahead and DNF the series. Number 12 is one of my most disappointing reads of the year, which I thought it would be, um, and that's going to be The Fall of Babel, or Babel, whichever you want to say, um, by Josiah Bancroft. This is the fourth novel in the, um, in his series that starts with Sinlin Ascends, and this basically follows our man Sinlin, who in the first book, he goes to the Tower of Babel, which he's always wanted to visit his entire life, and he takes his new wife and he immediately loses her and they had already talked about if they get lost from each other they're gonna just go to the tower so he goes to the tower to try to find her and he enters the tower by himself and it's this you know nobody really knows what the tower is and what happens inside of it but it's basically different ringdoms different governments and he kind of has to fight his way through the tower in order to save his wife and this book again could have been 200 pages shorter. This is a long book that I read. I really enjoyed these characters. A lot of people, um, I, I just, I, a lot of this was, again, filler. Stuff that we did not need. Stuff that was not really important to the story. The story wrapped up fine. It was okay. But again, there was stuff in here that we just didn't need. It, was, it wasn't essential to the story. And so I will read other things that Josiah Bancroft um, writes, but this was just kind of a disappointment for me, three stars. The next series that I did wrap up this month was the Wrath and the Dawn duology that ends with the Rose and the Dagger, and I gave this three stars. This follows, uh, in the first book, uh, our main character has basically volunteered to be the prince's new bride because the prince uh, picks a new bride each night and they don't make it to dawn because he murders them and she is determined that he will not murder her she will murder him and this is that situation again I thought this ended terribly I thought here we are we're going through all this business and then the, it wrapped up in like I don't know three pages it was very anticlimactic I didn't really care I didn't really get into these characters as much as other stories that I've read and so it was just fine it was three stars uh nothing to write home about 
The next book I read is going to be Blood and Honey by Shelby Mehran, which is the second book in the series. It starts with Serpent and Dove. I really enjoyed Serpent and Dove and I'd heard not very good things about this installment. And I will say that my expectations were actually uh, very low for this and so it exceeded my expectations because I thought the book was fine. Although it did have some parts where it was boring but it was a quest. We did have a journey and we had a purpose and so I felt like it wasn't, you know, bad at all. I liked where the story eventually went to. Um, I don't really understand why people hate this book as much. I guess they, they don't like the journeying and they don't like the, there is something that happens and they have to basically round up some people and it does go through the whole rounding up the people and I guess that's what people don't like. I thought it was fine. A lot of people thought that the main characters kind of disbanded and didn't act the way they acted in the first book which I can see but overall I still really enjoyed their characters and I will I'm looking forward to continue on the restars overall. The next book my first four star read is going to be When You Get the Chance by Emma Lord. I finally read it yes so this follows our main character who basically um, she has found her dad's live journal from way back when and she realizes that He's writing about different women he has been with around the time that she was born. And she does not know who uh, her mother is. She's never met her mother. Uh, her dad has always told her that she just, you know, has left her life and we don't know where she is and yada yada. And she realizes that one of these women has to be her mother. So she starts investigating that. And there is a character in there that's kind of like a rival because she... They, she is into theater and this other male is also into theater and they are rivaling as well and I thought it was cute I thought it was fun and as with all Emma Lord's book I books I really really enjoyed this one the next one is going to be A Gathering of Shadows by V. E. Schwab now this starts with Dark Shade of Magic and I gave Dark Shade of Magic three stars and this one got four and I hear a lot of people say that they are actually disappointed in the second one but I really, really enjoyed it. I do not think 100% that this book added anything to the story. I think positively you might can cut most of this book out of the story, but <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the characters of this novel. So this basically is in a world where there are multiple different Londons, some with magic, some with not, and there is uh, super beings superhumans, uh, super magic users that can travel between wor worlds and one of our main characters is one and there are people that don't have magic that want magic and there's warring between the worlds and all of that good things in this fantasy world and this had like a tournament school had like a tournament setting in which I really liked and again I am excited now to carry on with the final book. The next one is All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata. I really liked this, not as much as the other Mariana Zapata books I have read, but I truly, truly did like this. This follows one of our main characters. She is moving to a town and she has rented what she thinks is a B&B and when she gets there to rent it, she realizes that a kid has put it up for sale and his dad did not know about it and so it goes from there they meet it's a grumpy kind of sunshine kind of thing and it's it's really cute and but i didn't connect with the characters as much in this one as i did in the others but i still highly recommend mariana zapata i know a lot of people this is one of their favorite mariana zapatas so the next is going to be a Torch Against the Night, which is the second book in the Ember and the Ashes series. This is following, basically, there is this mean government who has killed a bunch of people and our main character has escaped and her brother has gone to prison and she infiltrates the government and there is another main character who is actually basically a government assassin for them and they kind of meet up. They are kind of in cahoots with each other and so basically they're trying to overthrow the government and I enjoyed it. <laughs> I really 
do like this series. I gave this book four stars and look forward to continuing on to the next one in August. The next really cute thing that I read was Heartstopper volume number three by Alice Oseman again with the Heartstopper. Two cute boys in love and I really liked this one as well. I like how in these graphic novels it really hits some hard-hitting topics. As you know as me in romance I like hard-hitting topics and these graphic novels also have that in them and I they are so adorable. Highly recommend. The next book is I'm happy to say is Turncoat by Jim Butcher. Now this is my copy that my little dog my new dog has kind of chewed up but it's okay we will forgive her but this is actually uh, I really enjoyed this installment of Dresden and this sets us up for the book Changes, which they say is the best book in the Dresden universe and will tear my heart out. So I'm not looking forward to that, but I'm kind of looking forward to it in the month of August when I read Changes. But I really, really enjoyed this. This was another great installment from Dresden, and I gave it four stars. The next one I read is Finlay Donovan Knocks Some Dead, which will catch me up with this series before the new book comes out in January. I absolutely love Finlay. I really love Angela Dolls, who is the one that narrates the Finlay books. Oh my gosh. She makes it completely just, she makes the book almost, not really, but she makes a good portion of the book and I really, really enjoy her narration of the story and I really love Finlay as a person. Um, the first one starts out with Finlay and she is a down on her luck, just divorced uh, author who is kind of pitching, trying to figure out what she's going to do with her life. She's pitching her next novel and she is talking to her agent at a Panera Bread and they're discussing the plot of the book and the person that is sitting next to her kind of thinks she is an assassin and so she tries to hire her to murder her husband and it's full of shenanigans and this one was also full of shenanigans. I gave the first one five stars. This one got four stars. Still overall a really enjoyable read and I would recommend this series. Now we are down to to my favorite books of the month and the number two spot is going to go to Under the Whispering Door by JJ Klune. I really didn't expect to enjoy this one as much because I had heard some mixed reviews on this and this follows our main character and he is basically just an a-hole and he is not very nice to people and all of a sudden he dies and he goes into this waiting area before you get to where you're gonna go and he meets some a girl who is gonna take her to the waiting house and so he kind of gets a chance to learn about what he did wrong in life and kind of go back on that learn some lessons kind of thing and be, decide when he wants to pass on and I thought it was great I thought the lessons were fantastic in this book and I really like the character. I know that a lot of people don't like the characters but I did like the characters in this 100% and so I would recommend this to someone. I did shed some tears in this one. So and now comes my favorite book of the month and that is going to go to Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. Um, Abby Jimenez has like she has submitted herself as my favorite author. I mean, I have loved just about everything that she has written. She has read, she has written four books. I've read them all. I love them all. I five starred three of them. So this follows our main character and she basically her car breaks down and a handsome country boy is there to save the day. However, she is an ER physician and he is a country boy and where she comes from, she is too good for him and her family is going to think that she is too good and her friends and all of that and their worlds are just two different things. And But despite all the odds, they wind up falling in love and I swoon. Like this is one of my favorite couples of all time now. I absolutely positively loved them. I love this book. I, If you like romance, totally read this. I, I don't even know what to say. Like, country boy and an ER physician and a cutesy. I, I mean, <laughs> that is all the books that I read in the month of July. And coming into August, if you watched my August TBR, you will see that I'm going to continue knocking off some series in the month of August. And I'm super, super excited to get some of these series off my plate. I am going to say that I am going to be very picky going forward about which series I continue because this month in July I kind of got into almost a slump when I was trying to just get through some of these books because hey 
they're part of a series. I don't want to DNF the series, but I have to think to myself that it doesn't matter. I need to DNF the series. Period, point blank. That's what we're going to do. And um, I hope your reading month in July went well. Let me know what you read down in the comments below. I will catch you guys next time.